The turbulent early 1970s witnessed the corrective movement, a bloodless coup orchestrated by one General Hafez al-Assad on November 13th, 1970. Assad's vision, anchored in sustaining and enhancing the nationalist socialist line, triggered a profound ideological shift within Syria. The movement, born from meticulous planning following a failed Syrian military intervention in Jordan, unfolded during the Emergency National Congress on October 30th, 1970. Condemned by the then president and his supporters, Assad strategically surrounded the Congress with loyal troops, orchestrating the downfall of his political adversaries. Assad ordered the arrest of government members, imprisoning the president, and establishing a temporary regional command, a moment of apparent calm that solidified Assad's power. As Assad consolidated power, the imposition of mass surveillance marked his regime's descent into totalitarianism. A military dictatorship ensued, marred by human rights violations, arbitrary detentions, extrajudicial killings and the elimination of opposition, both leftist and conservative. Yet, Assad's ambitions transcended his nation's borders. He envisioned Syria as a regional powerhouse, forging alliances with the Soviet Union and nurturing ties with anti-Israeli militant groups like the Palestine Liberation Organization. His foreign policy maneuvers were calculated moves in a high-stakes geopolitical chess game, aimed at bolstering Syria's influence in the Middle East. Amidst the veneer of stability, Assad's iron-fisted rule manifested in grandiose gestures. Sculptures and monuments erected in his honour dominated the Syrian landscape, a visual testament to his unyielding grip on power. These monuments, symbols of his authority, loomed large, casting a shadow over the populace. Despite the simmering discontent and sectarian divisions, Assad remained resolute, his leadership style prioritising control and order above all else. Asking you again, is, is it in fact you being your father's son and you believe that the only way to drive out people is to eliminate them the same way your father did? In, in being independent, yes. In fighting terrorism, yes. In defending the Syrian people and the country, yes. The Afghanistan king was loved by those in his country as he began to bring his ancient civilization into the 20th century. He built roads, dams, schools, infrastructure and improved the lives of women in his country, but this was not to last. The Afghanistan king came in 1971 with a feeling of security and stability to visit the queen. The royal train arriving at Victoria brings the King of Afghanistan on a state visit. The Queen, speaking in French, warmly welcomed King Mohammed Zahir Shah and his daughter. The last state visitor from Afghanistan came to London in 1928, the reigning monarch at that time, King Amanullah. But this ordered world was about to collapse, and this visit would be his last. Mohammed Daoud, the Prime Minister of Afghanistan and longtime royal supporter, stabbed the king in the back and took control after years of power grabbing and harnessing. He declared Afghanistan to be a republic and sent the king into exile. This was the first sign of the long turmoil and instability to come to Afghanistan. 